fam, that's what they call me I promise that you'll never be lonely Be the fam, that's what they call me Alright, welcome back guys, JMC5 production We're still on the roll with uh, the Blades and Volkov, ESPN11 So, uh, when, uh, now we're on the main card, guys This is where it gets interesting, this is where it really Yeah, I mean, fucking hits So, uh, let's just start it off, man Jim oh. Miller, 31 and 14, fighting Roosevelt Roberts, 10 and 1, man. Uh, Joe, what do you think about that, dog? It's so crazy, guys, because you got Roosevelt Roberts, who looks so good and so impressive against Brock Weaver just right there on May 30th. It's like two weeks and he slipped around, you know, come back on a three week notice. It's like, let's go, let's bang it out, take no damage. Fighting Jim Miller, veteranized Jim Miller, who I love. Nothing but respect, Jersey, you know what I mean, from New Jersey native, uh, we're going to go Roberts. I think Roberts is tall, lengthy, does that good boxing, good, good, good jiu-jitsu, um, good takedown defense. His only loss in the UFC is to uh, Vince Michelle. Yeah, Vince Michelle, who is an animal, and his wrestling is good, but we'll see. Jim Miller's wrestling is good, he got good stand-up, veterinized, you know, knows what to do, he's got good fight IQ. I think Roberts is going to be too much. He's got that good jab, good uppercut. Like I said, that guillotine. Jim Miller sticks his neck in deep. And he gets finished a couple times with a couple taller dudes. Nate Diaz. Can't really compare Roberts to Nate Diaz and any of those guys yet. But, but Dan Hooker and stuff like that. Still, yeah. hey, Roberts will come at it, man. So, what was Roberts? Yeah, man. And this one, this one was hard for me because I, you know, I was initially taking Jim Miller. Just, you know what I mean? Because... Man, Jim Miller's an animal. Jim you know, Miller, Jim Miller yeah. I think it, this will be will be his like fifty fight. Yeah, fifty fight or some shit like this. Oh, and, and, and that's crazy because that just shows how talented you the it's UFC forty six. But that uh, that just shows how like how talented Roosevelt Roberts is if they're already throwing in Jim Miller. You know what I mean, and. Man, such I, a quick turnaround. He's fighting May thirtieth. Yeah, you know and, I mean? and the way the way the thing about Roberts is the way he handled Brock Weaver, man. Brock's like, tough. Brock Brock's one fucking tough savage motherfucker, and Roosevelt Roberts just basically manhandled him, man. And, and it was it was sad because I was thinking Brock, yeah. But uh, I had to go with Joseph on. You mean the jab? Roosevelt has this nice crisp jab and his boxing's clean. Uppercut, uh, left hook, boom, boom. And with well, Jim Miller, I mean, he gets caught a lot, I feel like. Uh, Especially against taller guys. Yeah, and it, I think the best, Jim Miller's best thing right now is get to the ground or utilize those leg kicks. I mean, he has some mean leg kicks. I mean, he fought Dustin Poirier and he fucked up DP's legs, man. That, that was crazy. Uh, Even on the ground, though, you know, yeah. it's worry, man. That Jiu Jitsu of Roberts is sick. But uh, I, I, I'm taking Roosevelt Roberts in this. I do see him probably about that the second round mark. You know what I mean? About three minutes, three minutes, four minutes in. And getting it done with a TKO finish. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going to say second or third round, Roosevelt Roberts. I'm going to say second round, kind of like how he played Robert. I mean, I just kind of beat Weaver. Mm -hmm. But if you take it to him, I think, you know, with all this COVID stuff, you know, a lot of fighters ain't in the best shape or in the best shape that they are could be in. And I'm, I'm hoping the best for Miller, but... I was gonna bring it. Man, and going back to with the uh, to Jim Miller, he his last fight he fought Scott Holtzman, and about that third round he did kind of gas out. I feel like I feel like he did. Uh, yeah, I mean he he got slower and he he was still. I mean Jim Miller he was still getting it done, but I really wish they would have stuck Scott Holtzman on that line against Roosevelt Robert. That'd be so sick. <laughs> but uh, let's we'll just jump into this next one, the welterweight matchup, something that's I think been targeted at for two or three different events. Uh, we got Lyman Good, who's twenty one and five. I'm Bilal Muhammad, who's sixteen and three. I'm gonna start this one off because uh, all my prayers still go out to Lyman Good because he did. You know, he is a COVID nineteen survivor. Uh, He's so, first you know, active UFC first, fighter, yeah. and uh, it, it was. You know, I mean, that, that, that's when I, like the UFC took the turn for the worst is when that shit happened. So, uh, yeah, you know, I still pray for Lyman Good for everything that's you know, happening to him. But I tell you what, I'm, I'm a big, I, I like Bilal Muhammad. Uh, the, I've always have. He's only lost three fights in the UFC against some tough names. Jeff Neal, Vincent Luque, and Alan Jabon. And but you won his debut. Yeah, that's, that just says something. And him, him and Jeff Neal, they scrapped down. And Lyman Good's big, but I don't think he's a Jeff Neal. I mean, he ain't Jeff Neal big. Well, he might be. He's bigger than Jeff Neal. He's bigger than Jeff. 
Does he hit? Mm. Does he hit as hard as Chris I, boxing his job? No, he definitely no. But uh, and I think that's what's gonna be like too. I feel like Wyman. You mean his last fight against Chance was really good, but but below Muhammad's not no chance for any camp. You know what I mean? He beat Chance too. But uh, I'm 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 gonna take Muhammad. I think Muhammad's gonna get it done. Uh, I definitely I see someone getting finished, but I'm gonna go with the decision just to just to throw it off of us just a little bit. I'm gonna go no, nah, I'm gonna take a finish. I think Bilal's gonna get it done in the third round. Um Bilal's stamps legit, it's very sick. The fact that Chance started catching Lyman in that third round, started coming back, started catching some good shots. I mean Lyman dominated all three rounds for sure, but like he was saying, Bilal's not no chance for Equator and um it's gonna show up Saturday night. I love I love Lyman good like you're saying, nothing but shots to Lyman good, nothing but prayers. If Lyman can beat Mel out below then it just really shows where we're at you know what i mean with lyman good he's transitioning very well the uh quick submission lost to damian maya don't sweat nothing off that you know he's he's 21 and 5 and he's still pretty young he's 30 something and he's right there in his prime so we'll see what happens but i gotta stick with below mohammed and i feel like with these two the winner of these guys right here you know i mean think, just think about the you know I mean, top 15 of the welterweight division right now or not even that, like the top twenty right now. There's top some fifteen. These guys, yeah, these, yeah, these guys, these, these guys ain't no joke. These guys are definitely on the on the track right now. Good gyms, you know. They're 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 coming, guys. You know, and uh, it's let's that one seventy class is just straight stacked. It's like one thirty five up def- to one seventy. It's definitely one of the mo- like one of the three stacked most divisions right now. You, you mean both the weight, yeah. lightweight, and the featherweight, uh, bantamweight, bantamweight, bantamweight for sure. And that way it's even stacked yeah, right and now. Yeah, that way it's getting stacked up pretty good. Not like that way. But anyways, we're going to drop it down to the women's uh, bantamweight division. We have Roquel, Rock, what, Rocky? Okay. Yeah, I think it's actually Pennington, who's 10-8. and eight. She's fighting Marlon Ren- Renew. Ren- Marion Renew. Renew. Yeah, that's the name. And she's 9-5-1. Uh, and one. <sighs> Joe, how about you start, you start this one off, man? Oh, man. You know, this is kind of one of those things that I think that... Uh, we got fights like uh, Bobby Green, Leticia Torres. That those type, those two fights. I think that they should be on the. I mean, no, no discredit to Pennington. She just fought for a title like two or three fights ago against Amanda Nunes. Coming off a loss to Holly, beat uh, Aldana, which was a very close fight. I was going for Aldana in the fight. I thought she won that fight, but we'll, see. you know, can't take it from her now. Pennington's tough as nails. Ten and eight. Mary Renault, nine and five. I don't know. It's one of those things that I, I'm going to stick with the Colorado girl because we're in Utah. I'm going to go Raquel Pennington. Good leg kicks, good boxing. She stops the wrestling at Mary Renew. And then, uh, you know, we get on with the night. I think the coming event is where I want to be at right now. But I'm going Raquel Pennington. Decision. I don't think, I, maybe, maybe finish her. Yeah. I, I'm, going, I'm going Rocky in this fight, too. Uh, I th- she does have some good boxing. But I just, I don't think Marlon... Or Marion, or have you ever pronounced her name? I just don't think that uh, she. I don't think her stand ups as good as as uh, Holly Holmes or Aldana's or uh, GDR and that. You know what I mean, and I. But that's that's the only thing with this fight. It's just one of those things, and it's just kind of one of those anticipators because then you have this fight. So you have the Lyman Good and below fight, and then you have this fight, which it's all right. Um, in my opinion, it's just one of those things. The one thing I love about Pennington is her toughness. She doesn't get finished by Holmes. She doesn't get finished by Menunez. She doesn't get finished by JDR. JDR is the best striking women. You know what I mean? You got Nunes. You got all these guys. It's just like, the fuck is this dude playing? But it's it's I don't know. It's just one of those things. Uh, I can I can definitely give it to Pennington. Uh, you know what I mean? She's it definitely. You know what I mean? She's been fighting like the fight the toughest. Baddest women in MMA. I mean, she's in the last five, six fights, so she ain't no joke. Uh, Marion, she fought Yana Kutinea uh, and Sarah McMahon, and you know, it's just one of those things right now. I'm picking Pennington. So, uh, you guys, thank you guys for watching. We have two more fights, so come back to the next video after this one. We're going to talk about the co main event Shane Bird with some Josh Emmett. The fucking featherweight barn burner right there. I'm going to talk about the main event. Woo! So, guys, please like, subscribe, and please come back and watch our Doxy next video, guys. Fires, guys. You don't want to miss.